the Cinderella run is over for Nigeria. I mean, it is heartbreak. It is heartbreak for Nigeria. It's finished nil-nil, but England win 4-3 on penalties. And I mean, whatever else you might say, the fact is that when England look back on this game, they will say that they've got out of jail. They've escaped. Escape, and that's what it is. And what it reminds me a little bit of is the game against Spain from the European Championships. Uh, if you remember last year, Spain as well, they were leading 1-0 for a long period of time, almost up to the 84th, 85th minute, and then England scored uh, a, a really a goal out of nothing, and they went on to win that game. And I said England got out of jail then, and they went on to win that tournament. Will this be the precursor for them to win this tournament? It's still very early days to say, but I think what, what, what will be prominent in the team is that England got out of jail in this game. They really, really did. I think Nigeria were the better team from, from minute 1 to minute 90, I, uh, minute 120, really. Nigeria were the better team. Even even you know, when they, it was 11 v 11, when it became 11 v 10, Nigeria were the better team. And sometimes, you know, that, that can be more of a reason for heartbreak as well because Nigeria should really have won it in the 90, if not in the 120. They should have won it. They had a, some very promising opportunities, some very good chances. I mean, Plumter hit the post. Um, there was a, another, you know, shot of the post in the second half as well. Two shots of the post, really. Um, there were other guilted chances. I mean, Oshuala right at the end could have scored, which, uh, but he shot straight at Erbs. There were lots of chances that were created and they should have taken one of them at least and they would have been winners but uh, as so happens happens at the highest level often you miss your chances and you're made to pay for it later on and that is what happened they didn't take their chances it went to penalties and England you know held their nerve and they've gotten through and um, I mean it is disappointing but I think you know Nigeria can take a lot of heart from this game they can take a lot of heart from their entire performance in this tournament nobody really gave them much of a, cho a chance but to come through a group with Australia Canada and to push England as close as they have done, I think that takes a lot of doing and that takes a lot of courage, a lot of heart, a lot of resilience. All the plaudits in the world, not enough for Nigeria's performance. They were excellent in this game. I, I really can't say enough. The only question that I would ask is why Oshuola did not take a penalty and I think probably she might have been ready to take the fifth one. Maybe she was not fit enough, but I think she should have taken the first one. That would be the only complaint I would have. But otherwise, I mean, everybody was excellent. Um, and especially about to Ainde. Ainde, you know, had the most important role in the, in the match, which was to contain Lauren James. And she did that really, really well. And not only did she contain Lauren James, she had a big part in getting her frustrated enough to have a sent off. And which is, which is um, you know, something that, that, that is commendable. I think she probably would be my man of the match for the game. Um, the only other player who I would contend is Alex Wienwood. Alex Wienwood was excellent in defense. I think she was England's best player. And, uh, you know, the fact they've gone through, I think they, they owe, owe a lot to Alex Green, which was excellent and throughout this game. And that brings me to England, because I think um, the story the, of the game, game, win or lose, would have been England. And it is England, because I think in this game, they made a lot of errors. I mean, Serena Wiegmann, and I was saying this, if they lose, I think this has got to be on Serena Wiegmann, because she made so many errors in this game, so many uh, tactical errors, so many personnel errors. Kira Walsh, I mean, if she's fit, she should be starting, perhaps. But the fact is, you, you can't play a 3-4-1-2 if you're playing her. You've got to go back to a 4-3-3. And you could see that as soon as they went down to 10 men, England switched to a back four. And they looked so much better. Um, you know, there was abysmal before that, so anything would have been a step up. But even the back four with 10 men, with 10 players, they still looked much better um, than they did, uh, you know, with three at the back and 11 players. And that shows that they need to play a back four. The back three was not working. I think after about 20, 25 minutes, it was clear the back three was not working. And yet she still persisted with it for whatever reason. God alone knows why. Um, I thought Lauren James should have been taken off long before she got sent off. It was clear that that was not working either. Or at least change the system to kind of have her play maybe on the wing. Maybe have somebody else to give her support in midfield because she was fighting a lone battle um, that just wasn't working out I mean the 3-4-1-2 the, the problem as well with the front two was they were keep they kept getting split uh, you know uh, Russo was playing on the wing and then Hemp was being tracked to the wing so there was no you know middle uh, middle support and, and because James was being tracked by Inde she had no way nowhere to go so again that you know it, things like that you know I noticed it watching it on the on the screen and so I'm not, I'm not sure why Bigman didn't notice it didn't make a change uh, but as soon as she made the, cha the change to a back four she brought up Russo brought in Chloe Kelly suddenly the whole you know dynamic changed and you know if they had 11 um you know playing back for they might have been able to win it in the 90s so that's one thing uh, i was very disappointed with russo's performance i think russo has been very disappointed throughout this tournament to be honest and i wonder if she should start the next game um the issue now is that james is probably going to be out for the rest of the tournament depending on how many um games she misses and how how far england go um, she's probably going to miss the rest of the tournament. It was silly, silly child. A silly, silly thing, by the way. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, I was thinking she's lucky if she gets away with a yellow. But uh, it was turned to red. And it was the right decision because it's just silly to get that red card at that stage of the game. Um, you know, we I didn't really help England much. That was the right decision. The wrong decision was the penalty that wasn't given to England. I thought that was a penalty in the first half. Um, because, and I think it was one of those where 
where you the ref gives it, but they don't give it. But once the ref has given it on on Rachel Daly, then we are should not intervene. This is, we are should not intervene. It's a subjective decision. It's one that the referee has taken. The VAR has already got to look: is there contact? There's contact. Is it deliberate? It's deliberate. The referee has given it. That's it. Done. But the VAR, I think, wanted to kind of intervene. Wanted to kind of feel important. I don't know what it was, but why they intervene and why the referee didn't stick to her decision and say, no, you know what, this is a penalty. Sometimes referees, you know, they get influenced by VAR telling them it's a mistake. So yeah, that, that was just uh, not not a good decision. And I think England could have legitimately felt hardened by if, if they lost the game um, because of that penalty. But again, England being England shouldn't have to rely on penalty decisions. But uh, that being said, um, you know, it didn't come back to bite them. So that's good. Um, for the next game, I, I you know, I think Russo will start, but I think Russo should be benched. I think Russo should be benched. Um, but I think she will start because Lauren James is now unavailable. So whatever system they play, um, they'll probably have to play Russo. I don't think they can afford to have both Russo and Lauren James not starting. Um, Beth England, has she done enough to earn a place? Probably not. But I would like to see maybe Ella Toon or somebody else coming in um, to play number 10. Maybe Katie Zellum. Maybe have Zellum, Stanway and uh, Walsh playing there. We'll have to see what, what Wigman comes up with. But um, the good news is it's Colombia or Jamaica. And I don't think either of them are on the level of Nigeria. I think both are very good. I mean, Jamaica are very good defensively. But they won't have the offensive threat that Nigeria has. So at least uh, defensively, I think <laughs> it would be a bit of an easier game, maybe, in theory at least, for England than it was this one. But... At the end of the day, penalties, they've done it. Uh, England have gone through, so congratulations to England for going through to the quarterfinals of the competition. It's an open competition now with the States, with the United States out, so England would have been disappointed if they went out, but uh, they've got a good chance of winning this tournament. Uh, and, you know, having come through this game will give them a lot of belief and a lot of, um, you know, courage to take into the next few games because uh, they, they'll know they've been in a battle. They'll know they've been in a battle, to, uh, you know, today, tomorrow, they'll know that. And they've come through that, they've escaped. Um, and that sometimes can really motivate you and drive you on forward. So let's hope that happens for England. Um, so congratulations to them. Nigeria, hard done by. But you know, sometimes, you know, you give the plaudits for, the, for, the, for a good performance. But as I said often, good performances are great. But ultimately, I'm sure Nigeria will be disappointed that they didn't win this game because this game was there for the taking. This game was there for them to win it. And they will be disappointed that they didn't win it because, um, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just one of those things that I think they could have done. A little bit more composure, a little bit more self-belief, perhaps. Um, a little bit more leadership maybe, they could have won this game and they'll know that. And that is the disappointing part, right? Um, that when you compete and sometimes you come so close, um, that will disappoint them. But, you know, they can, as I said, they can take heart from the fact that they've had a very good tournament um, right up till the last moment. And that is something to be proud of. So anyway, congratulations to England. Uh, congratulations to Nigeria. Smash like for England. Smash like for Nigeria as well. Smash like for if you enjoyed this video. Uh, do share your thoughts on, on the game. Loved what I loved it. Um, if you enjoyed it, do share that as well. Always love hearing your thoughts. Um, do subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Appreciate your support. Thank you so much. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.